Hello everyone, today I have a very special worm video for you. As you might recall if you've seen my question and answer video where I answered your questions for over an hour, I answered many times that the very first piece of malware I was ever infected with was the Sasa worm in 2004, and that's what really made me interested in malware. And today, April 30th, 2014, is the 10th year to the day from when Sasser started spreading. So I guess that marks the 10th day since I became interested, or 10th year, sorry, since I became interested in malware and wanting to study it. And so I figured I'd do a very special video today and really do an in-depth look of the Sasser worm. So here you can see we have a few news articles uh, and forum posts. The only news article I have is here. This is from CNN, as you can see, posted May 4th, 2004. And basically, Sasser just spread very quickly. I mean, very quickly, quickly overwhelmed the internet and was pretty much everywhere. And if you hadn't patched your system, you would be seeing the symptoms of the worm. And we also have a few forum posts. Uh, they're all pretty much the same thing, just people seeing this message on their system. They don't know why their system is shutting down, which we will see in a moment. And they're always running either Windows 2000 or Windows XP. So here's 2000. This guy is Windows 2000 professional, you know. Obviously that is going to change soon. He says he doesn't have an antivirus on it. And you definitely want to have an antivirus, especially back in the day. When malware was more malicious in um, just attempting to mess with your computer or your files. Rather than trying to make money as it's doing nowadays. Have this one we are running XP his girlfriend is having issues with lsass.exe terminating and the system rebooting posts hijack this log remember hijack this I don't know if people still use that but I remember people using that all the time a few years ago another guy please help me it's very annoying now are there any patches or something and yes there are Here's a Dell Latitude running Windows 2000, also being infected with the Sasser, and it's rebooting his computer at random times. System just shuts down and reboots. Alright. So, th that's the kind of forward I wanted to get out of the way. And, uh, just want to take the time right now to thank you, because I actually recently hit 10 million video views overall, and will soon be hitting 40,000 subscribers, so... Thank you all so much for continuing to watch and joining me on my malware adventures on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. Alright, so in the past there have been multiple instances in making my videos where virus authors have either divulged their name or printed it or there have been city names from places that aren't in the United States. And I am as pure-blooded American as you'll ever find and I cannot pronounce any of these names. And the worm author of Sasser was actually arrested shortly after he released the worm and here's his name and I can't pronounce it but I do have my good friend Monarch and he is German and he's going to help us today to pronounce his name so Monarch how do you pronounce this name yeah well you pronounce this name Sven Yashan Sven Yashan I would see I would have said like Josh Sean or Josh Chan or something say I'm glad I have you here Thank yeah, you. and you're welcome. All right. Feels good to help you out on this. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Monarch's a good friend of mine, and he also helps me moderate over at MalwareUp. And uh, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, now we'll go ahead and demonstrate the worm infecting a PC. As you can see here, we have our Sasser executable on our desktop, and we're looking at the overview of CPU performance on the computer. When we go ahead and run the worm, we'll see CPU usage jumps up immediately to 100% as the worm uses all system resources available to uh, attempt to spread itself, which is its only purpose, is to spread. And if you look in the uh, processes list, occasionally you'll see ftp.exe pop up. Uh, this is from the FTP server that Sasser launches in order to spread itself. When it finds a computer that is vulnerable, it will open up the FTP server and send its files on over. And as you can see here, this is the main uh, symptom you'll notice on computers infected with Sasser. LSA shell export version will crash and will need to be closed. This pops up every time the computer is started. Sasser also drops a win2.log file, as you can see here. And I have my text formatting a little off, but it's pretty much made to be a list of IP addresses that Sasser has infected. 
However, I'm not sure if it's working correctly as all of them on all the computers I've seen start with a four digit uh, initial IP address, which isn't possible. Additionally, it drops its file, the worm body, as avserve2.exe, meaning this might be the B variant of Sasser in the C colon slash Windows directory. It's about 16 kilobytes, not very large since all it's supposed to do is spread. And here we can see once again the LSA shell export version has crashed and needs to close. This is from lsass.exe, a critical Windows process dealing with uh, file permissions and basically owners of processes. Uh, Sasser exploits a vulnerability in this process to spread and the author actually reverse engineered a patch from Microsoft that fixed this issue and then made the worm utilize that vulnerability and was able to spread to millions of PCs around the world. And here is the final symptom you'll see on systems infected with Sasser. You get a system shutdown dialog box telling you that LSASS has crashed and you have 60 seconds to save all your work and shut down the PC or it will do it for you. So if you don't save you'll lose any work but pretty much when Sasser infects a system since it's using all those system resources the computer is practically unusable. It hogs everything for itself and everything becomes slow and unresponsive and generally is a pain in the ass to use. If we go to the shutdown dialog box, we will see that because LSASS has crashed, we can no longer shut down or restart the computer. We can only switch users or log off. This is because LSASS determines who has permissions on the computer, and when it crashes, you no longer have permissions to restart. So as you can see, once the timer is up, the computer reboots and starts Windows. We're loading back into Windows now. And remember that the worm has dropped its files to the system so that it will start automatically now that it has infected it. If we look at Task Manager, we can see it has started from the avserve 2exe process. And once again, you can see the FTP process starting up. Now, already we see that LSASS has crashed due to the worm. And we can see CPU usage is sitting once again at 100%. Steady, it won't go down. And we can see that Task Manager is now no longer responding, which is never a good sign. The worm is using so many resources that we cannot use Task Manager effectively to do anything to the system. Clicking around, we'll have to end Task Manager because it's not responding. And even that takes forever. You have chose to end the non-responsive program, Windows Task Manager. And as we can see, we can already see the system shutdown starting. As you can see, I have a small network here set up. We'll go ahead and go through the computers that are listed here. On the floor is a Dell Optiplex, actually gifted to me by my friend Landon, who used to be my coworker at Pizza Hut. And this will be the source of the infection. You can see it on the first monitor on the left here. And as we pan up, we can see the rest of the computers that are sitting in our network. Uh, the big white box, computer number two, you might know it from my earlier videos, is actually the Gateway PC that was featured in a lot of my early videos. Computer three is a Dell Optiplex that used to belong to my father about 10, 15, nah, 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years ago. And pretty much just hang on to it and using it now for this video. Computer number four is a Dell Latitude laptop that I purchased off eBay about six months ago or so. It's from 2002, pretty low spec, pretty slow, and it's perfect for this video. And last but not least is a Toshiba Tekra 720 CDT, which was also owned by my dad, and this has pretty much been owned since it was new, so probably since 1995 or so. So it used to be, whenever this computer came out, this laptop came out, is when we bought it. And pretty much just been around since then, and it's running Windows 2000, upgraded from Windows 95. So now we will go ahead and run the worm, and now that we've run it, it's simply a matter of waiting and seeing which of the computers it will infect next over a period of time. So as we can see, it takes about 5 minutes and 23 seconds for the first computer to be found and infected, and in this case it was our gateway PC, Computer 2. So when the worm infects another computer, it first scans for all IP addresses it can think of 
and when it finds a computer on the other end it checks for vulnerabilities and if it finds this particular LSASS vulnerability it wants to spread it will exploit it, open up an FTP server and send the worm over to the victim which will then execute the worm and continue spreading from that computer so the worm spreads without any human intervention whatsoever which made it spread very very quickly At about 7 minutes, we see the worm make the jump to the Dell Latitude laptop, computer 4, and it is also infected, and once again you see the CPU usage rise in Task Manager, and the worm will begin spreading from that computer as well. So now we have three computers on this network scanning and attacking victim PCs. It takes a little while longer, but we can see at 13 minutes 30 seconds, computer 3 begins to be infected, the uh, old Dell Optiplex that I have. So now there are four computers on this network that are infected, and they're all the XP computers, funnily enough. Finally, at 14 minutes and 20 seconds, we see the Windows 2000 computer pop up with the shutting down message. As Windows 2000 is also vulnerable to this particular LSASS exploit. However, this machine, unlike the Windows XP machines, doesn't actually receive the file infection. It just gets knocked offline by the worm. So it doesn't actually open the FTP server and download avserve2.exe. But it will get booted offline as long as the exploit is not patched and as long as it's not hooked up to a firewall while it's on the internet. So, while Windows 2000 won't actually be infected by the worm, it will be affected directly by it. So, now we can see in under 15 minutes, all five of these computers have been infected by Sasser. And now all of them will reboot continuously until they are cleaned. And I know a lot of you have expressed interest in removal portions of videos, so I'm actually going to include one right now. And we'll see what it takes to actually remove the, the worm. Sorry. Removal is actually quite simple but very tedious, especially on a large network. If we go ahead and go to the run prompt and start up with the command prompt and uh, move the system shutdown dialog box out of the way, we can actually stop the shutdown timer with the command shutdown a, as I'm sure many of you know. Once entered, the command stops the shutdown process. However, now the system is pretty unstable since we're running without lsass.exe. If we go ahead and look at regedit in the uh, hkey local machine current server run, where it starts up files on boot up, we can see avserve.exe has been added here. If we look at task manager now, we can see that all processes are running from unknown users since all attributions of ownership are gone. We can end the worm process give it a few minutes, a few seconds, and we can see that CPU usage instantly drops back down to normal levels since the worm is stopped. Once the worm is stopped, we can remove its registry key, which prevents it from running on boot up. Now we can just remove the files that the worm drops on the system. So delete worm uh, win2.log, then delete avserve2.exe from the Windows folder. Now, cleanup is complete, however, you really should patch your system. As you can see, LSASS is still crashed, so we'll need to turn off the computer using the power button instead of the shutdown menu. Now, in order to prevent reinfection, you'll need to install updates from Windows on your computer and pretty much obtain a firewall or any antivirus that contains a firewall to prevent future reinfections. Now that our computer is booted up once again, we can go down to Task Manager, take a look, we'll see that CPU usage is normal, idling at about 2% to 0%, and the worm is no longer listed in the processes list. Now, you'd have to repeat that removal process if you didn't have an automatic tool on every computer on your network that is infected, which might be a bit of a pain. That about wraps it up for the Sasser Worm video. Thank you all so much for joining me on this video, and thanks again for helping me reach 10 million overall video views. Here's looking forward to the next 10 million, and to the next virus video review. Uh, thanks again, guys.